O Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. God's glory outshines the heavens. God's works are boundless and beautiful. And yet our prayers we need. Join me in prayer. Blessed Trinity, in whom we know the maker of all things seen and unseen, the Savior of all, both far and near. By your Spirit, enable us to worship your divine majesty so that with all the company of heaven we may magnify your glorious name, saying, Holy, 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 glory to you, O Lord Most High. Amen. If you will rise and sing with me, hymn number two. God of grace, love, and communion, we confess that we have failed to love you with all our heart, soul, and mind, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. We ignore your commandments, stray from your way, and follow gods of money, ease, and entertainment. Have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and raise us to new life, that we may serve you faithfully and give honor to your holy name.
are given grace, we are given faith, none of which we deserve, but all come through God's love and faithfulness from us. Know that we are loved and forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Chance 
to do right. And yet, over and over we fail. But because God loves us and because God is faithful to that love for us, over and over we're given the chance to be better. That's what I want us to do. Is try to be better. So I have a little question down here. I'm going to ask it of everybody here. If someone hurts you, how can you show grace to them? How do we show grace to people who've done things that we don't like? You have to forgive, right? Jesus talked about that, right? You forgive your friend not seven times, not 70 times. Seven times, seventy times. And I've got a little favorite cartoon that goes along with that. It speaks to the teacher in me. There's Jesus talking to the apostles, and he says this, and then the apostle says, Now we have to do math. <laughs> <laughs> and so what he's talking about is we get a second chance, and so we should give other people. A second chance. Turn me in prayer. Dear God, Dear God, we thank you for second chances. We thank you for second chances. We thank you for the love we have. We thank you for the love we have. That leads to those second chances. That leads to those second chances. Give us enough love. Give us enough love. To give the people around us second chances when they need it. Second chances when they need it. Amen. Amen. It's a pretty neat little Bible here. Uh, in our Old Testament reading. Uh, we're going to start off with Proverbs. And Proverbs is written with a few characters that are sort of literary license that are used to illustrate things. And one of those characters we're going to learn about in this reading. Does not wisdom call? And does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way at the crossroads, she takes her stand beside the gates in front of the town. At the entrance to the portal, she cries out. To you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. Skipping down to verse 22. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts long ago. Ages ago, I was set up at the first before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth and fields of the world's first bits of soil. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep. When he made the firm the skies above. When he established the fountains of the deep. When he assigned the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command. When he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him, like a master worker. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. That's in the reading. Our psalm today, which we'll read responsibly, is Psalm 8. It's found on page 455 of your Old Testament. And it's a very short psalm. And we'll read responsibly verse by verse, except when we get to the last verse, we're all going to read it together. O oh Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. I don't know how to obey his 
You have found it in poor court, false in your colors. I shall find it in the end of the When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings if you are one by one of them? More mortals that you care for them. Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them the dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. All sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field. All birds of the air, fish of the seas, whatever passes along the path of the O Lord our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Our last reading today is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 16, verses 12 through 15. Jesus is speaking here. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth. For He will not speak on His own, but will speak whatever He hears. And He will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, we're called a confessional church because we have confessions. And it's not that we do the prayer confession at the beginning that caused that. It's because we confess our faith out loud. And if you're observant today, you will have noticed that the sign for the four Gospels, the hanging for the four Gospels, is back there. And up in front is this uh, banner with a fresco from an Eastern Orthodox Church, a very old fresco. And the reason for that is this is Trinity Sunday. It's the reason that we're both white and red today. And Trinity Sunday is the Sunday when we talk about the nature of God and the fact that God isn't just one simple, easy to understand being or thing or whatever. And so if we look up here, we have God the Father in brown because God created the earth. And then we have the Holy Spirit in red, which is a reference to the passage last week from Pentecost where the Holy Spirit came to the disciples as a flame. And then we have Jesus on top serving the communion meal. And serving the communion meal is important in this one because it comes and it shows that God is the parts of God, the way we see God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are in communion with each other. And so, you see this here. And there are two ways that people tend to look at the Triune God. We're going to talk about both of them a little bit. Right here we have the three in communion together working as one working together. Each with their own separate place and yet each intertwined. There's, and, and that is a very Eastern Orthodox way to look at it. This is, uh, this is from time when people weren't literate. The pictures that we have around church hanging on our banners and stuff, they, they, they go back to a time when people really didn't read. The one that's, the four gospels that I moved back over there that usually hangs behind me. The four symbols there, when, when someone who went to the early church but couldn't read would see one of those symbols, just like on your computer with an icon, because that's what they call them. When they would see one of those icons, they would know which gospel was being spoken of. And so they would use the pictures to convey. And that's where these pictures we have here come from. 
The other one that we have up front that stays up front has got a chi rho for Christ in the center. And then in the center of the picture is, looks like a hut or high. It's the house, it's the center, it's the home. That's God the Father. And then flowing from those is God the Spirit who flows out. And that gives us our, it's, it's another piece, another way we look at it. And so there's another kind of theology that you see that comes more from the Western church, which is where we come from. Um, although we've kind of gone back more looking at the Eastern way since the Reformation began. But one of the ways that the Western church tended to look at God, and one of the ways that a lot of the denominations in the Western church still do, is uh, they look at God the Father, the Creator, and then they have Jesus, who is subordinate. You know, and, and they bring that subordinate view in. You talk about when Jesus was praying in the garden and he said, you know, let this cup pass from me, but if not, I will obey your will. And that's where that subordinate peace comes from. And then they have the Holy Spirit who flows from the Father and from the Son. And so they see the Holy Spirit as subordinate to the other two. And so they're kind of steep, they're kind of uh, tiered. And I really, I don't particularly see God this way. I, I know this picture is about as good a summary of, of the way I see God as you can have in one image. And that we have these three pieces that are somehow interconnected and in communion with each other. And yet they all play a different role. And our understanding of that has changed, you know, all throughout the years. When we look at, we go back to the Old Testament, and we look, there was, everything was mainly God the Father, and then we had the Spirit of God was upon him, when we started talking about prophets. And then we have the New Testament, and Jesus comes and kind of turns all that upside down, and says, I'm here too, and if you read the very first part of the Gospel of John, you know, Jesus was there before all things, and through him all things were made. And then we have the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. And so our changing of our, our view and our understanding of God has changed throughout the centuries and still continues to change because we see new insights or we have new thoughts and we think. You know, we, we read something in the gospel and it occurs to us in a different way. And so, what we know is that we don't know everything. And, you know, the fastest way to learn is to admit that you don't know something. And there are many things about God that we don't really understand. We just have to accept that God is greater than we are. And in order to make things easy to understand, in order to help people, we have throughout the centuries written and given confessions. And this is an old, old tradition. Uh, the confession that we use most Sundays in church, the Apostles' Creed, was written in the year AD 180. Okay? That's about 150 years after Jesus died. And it's gone through some changes. And being Presbyterian, part of the PCUSA, we have a three-part constitution of the church, a three-part organization of the church as far as the government goes, church government. And, and the way it works is this. Our first and most important book that we use to define our church is the Bible. And... The Bible is where our understanding of God comes from. It is the primary source for us, for everything else that flows from it. And then we have the book of confessions, where we have different confessions written at different times for different reasons that are used to teach about 
God or to say what we believe about God. And then we have the book of order, which is the nuts and bolts of how we do stuff. And it is subordinate to the other two. It's less important. Because the most important thing for us is God. And then comes teaching about God. And then comes the way we do it. And so it's very, it's layered in that way to reflect our understanding of the Bible. And then when we look, and this Sunday, like most Sundays, we'll use the Apostles' Creed. And we have to know a little about our church history in order to really know what's going on when we do these things. And there was a guy about 140 or 150 A.D. called Marathon who claimed and, and came out of the church and claimed that Jesus was not the Messiah according to the Old Testament scriptures. Jesus was a prophet but not the Messiah. And so Roman Christians about 180 A.D started and began the writing of the Apostles' Creed because of that, to refute that thought, to refute that what they refer to as a heresy. Then, it's been changed. Originally, this would be what a candidate for membership in the church would have said when they were asked what they believed. And they would have recited this. But they wouldn't have recited the version we have now. They would have said, yes, God is the maker of heaven and earth. Jesus Christ is his son. Okay. We believe in the Holy Spirit. Those things, yes. But, there were People in the 2nd and 3rd centuries who were very thoroughly persecuted for their beliefs. And many of them in order just to survive. And in order not to have their families hurt. That renounced the church. And in order for them to be, there, there had to be some way, some, something that would allow them to be readmitted. And they did this, okay, by adding one line. I believe in the forgiveness of sins. Because that renunciation was seen as sin. Yes, it was practical. Yes, it was necessary. But it was seen as sin. And so it was necessary to add this so that we understood so that the church understood that even when you sin you can be forgiven this changed again and again through the centuries okay the word catholic meaning universal, was inserted in the 4th and 5th centuries to make it known that when we, when we worship God and we say that we're Christian, we all worship the same God. Even when we disagree about the nuts and bolts. If you've ever been to a presbytery meeting where they were talking about changes to the book of order, you'll know about disagreeing with, about the nuts and bolts. And you'll know about disagreeing about details. But our confession comes to us, our confessions come to us through the centuries that way. Some of them were written to take place or in, in response to events that were taking place like the confession of Barman. Some of them are catechisms, which are teaching documents. And 
All of these things come down to us to help us understand this triune God that is very difficult for a human mind to understand. Very difficult for the, a human because we're limited. Even, you know, we heard Jesus talking to the apostles today. You've walked around with me for all these years. You've seen me crucified. You've seen me come back. And you're still not ready to get the whole story. And we didn't see that. And so there's no way that we're ready to understand the whole story. What we are ready to understand is what we have in our confessions. We have God the Father who created. We have Jesus Christ, Son, who loves us and grants us grace. We have the Holy Spirit who is with us. These are the things that we are given to understand for sure. These are the things that are most important to any Christian faith. All the Christian faiths have these things in common. And the reason for that is that they're what matter. Remember that there's a God. And remember that God loves you. And you've got all the important stuff in the palm of your hand. Amen. 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 We do have a God who created this lovely earth that we live on, and it has a lot of good things to say about it. Our earth has a lot of good things to say about the God who created it. For that reason, let's thank God for this. Hymn number 14, For the Beauty of the Earth.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Turn me in prayer. Praying God, we know in truth so little about you, but those things that we know, we hold dear. We hold dear the beauty of your creation, we hold dear your love for us, and the love it allows us to show each other. We hold dear the communion we have with you through the Holy Spirit and your presence in our lives. We thank you for these things, all of these wonderful joys that we've been given, all of these blessings that we do not in any way deserve. We also bring to you our petitions, our petitions for help, our petitions for help. We ask that you be with those who suffer loss, be with those who suffer hurt, be with those sick in body and mind and soul. Bring them love, strength, and healing according to your will. Send your spirit to be with them, to hold them close, to give them the fellowship and love that we hold so dear. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. There comes a time in our day that every day, there comes a time in our day that we should thank God. And that's when we wake up. And when we go to bed. And just that little bit of space in between. And there also comes a time in our church service when we should give back some of the blessings that we've been given. And now is that time.
mission. Bless these gifts, multiply them, guide us in the continuation of that mission that we may fulfill your will on earth. Amen. What will Trinity Sunday be without the single most Trinitarian hymn of them all? God said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And thus we end with the beginning hymn. Number one, holy, holy, holy. Oh, yeah.